Ads are here, pausing for ads. Hello, 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 and welcome back to another stream. Happy Friday, everyone. I hope you're doing well. It's PCG testing time. Yay. <laughs> and then some game dev, probably. Let's see how long the PCG stuff takes. That is priority number one. Uh, and today we're doing uh, modular stuff. Taking these buildings that have no nothing on them. We're going to add doors and windows to them modularly and you know maybe some railings and stuff but all modularly and then uh yeah and then make a make something out of them hopefully uh you know, some unique unique designs uh not now for, for this building that's not gonna work on that side that that piece would probably be uh that, that would be like more for this side but then it would need a door here as well so yeah we'll, we'll see uh what we do uh how we do it or maybe it's just one of these kind of thing 
I don't know. We'll figure it out. But I got some ideas how to do this. So we'll do some testing. Hey, you guts. I'm doing well. How are you doing? Main thing is we have basically a little playground of of assets to work with. And just pop that down. That can be like a window. And I can have different windows. I can have like windows that stick out, windows that stick in. Right? Things of that nature. I wish this pivot was here. That's my only complaint. Why is the pivot here? Why is the pivot not here? I might change the pivots on these. Hey, look, welcome in. Welcome in. How's it going? Very curious to see, what, <clears throat> see the PCG working today. Yeah, that's going to be uh, our testing. I don't like the fact that some of these have different pivots. Right, like this and this. Why is there pivot here? When I'm building something like this, I'd want the pivot here. I'd want the pivot here, right? At the edge, centered by the edge. Like, at no point do I want to drag out and have it be like this. I mean, maybe I do. Maybe I want it normally, I want it only stick out this little. But I feel like most times, if I built it, a modular piece like that, I'd want it to stick out like that. I don't know. Maybe that's me. Uh, but we have a few things here uh, to play around with, right? We have a few doors. We have this door. This door. Yeah, uh, a few things. We have this, like, overhang. So we make a, a few a few designs. You can use Mary Nate's pivot tool to use great plugins for Unreal. Well, um, Unreal has uh, pivot options. You can go in here. So if I, I, for example, want to modify the pivot on this, I just go into the modeling tools and X transform. Uh, is it here? Uh, they they change things in five three, and I forget where it is. I forget where they moved it. Where they move it. It's not on transforms. Or edit pivot. Yeah, it is there. Yeah, so I can do edit pivot and then I can come here, just move it over, and then bam. I click accept and then it'll it'll uh it'll prove it. And then I can just click a button. I can do center, bottom, top, right? So I can do center, back, right? Now I can Assuming that you built, it's built, uh, and then just click accept, and then it assigns and it applies it to the actual mesh in here. So, you, so it's not just to this instance; it's to everything. I'm not going to in this instance because I'm going to use what I have as a as our base. Um. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, I don't know why it was built that way. Like. When building, when making something modular, I want the pivot where I'd want it to be connected, right? So like this thing, right? If I wanted it normally to connect here, that's where I put the pivot. And maybe that's the idea, right? That that could be the intent behind these. They they want them to connect here, but you have the option to take it out. In which case, yeah, okay, I get it. If that's the intent, then I get it. But at the same time. I feel like that's not necessarily the intent. Either way, let's. Uh, so we're gonna do uh, start with two things. First, we're gonna use PCG to place doors and windows on this thing, and then we're gonna use PCG to then scatter this building and make a little city out of them. I think that's a good setup. I kind of a, to show the the basics of how do you uh, use PCG with this stuff. I think that's that's decent. I'm using the Fantastic Village pack, which is one of the free packs. Um, actually, I don't need this. That's what I was testing with. I don't need Soul City. Um, it's one of the free packs that is uh, yeah, available for everyone. So I get rid of this thing. 
Because I don't need it. As for, oh, yeah. In, in uh, Unreal 5, there's now, like, fantastic tools for, um, for you know, tweaking pivots and, like, all sorts, like, basic modeling, displacements, all, all sorts of stuff. It's great. And right now, the sun is, like, like, a centimeter less to the left of the camera. And it's coming in. You, I mean, you can see. It's bright and I hate it. Uh, it's the worst. Go away, son. It's heating up my room. I don't really <laughs> okay, let's, let's finish up now. Come on. And then we can get started with this. ECG. Da -da 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 -da. I hope it's gonna work the way I think it's gonna work. And if it does, this should be relatively simple. And if it's not, then I'm gonna cry. So I'm probably gonna cry because it's never as simple as I think it is. <laughs> that's, that's usually the case. You know, you always have an idea like, oh, it should be done, you know, do it in here, down there. What about centimeters? Hmm? I could have just deleted the fo or the folder like on Windows and just refresh the project and the folder would be gone. Why does it take so much longer to delete things in Unreal? I haven't like I haven't even used this folder. I just migrated it over. Oh, hello hello on fail uh, Man, I completely this i blame the sun <laughs> the chat is like a centimeter above or brother below the sun and i totally miss your message <laughs> will you uh will you only add props or will you build the walls no i will not be building the walls if you want to see how to do, do like building of the walls i have a building series already that does that stuff this is a re this is uh gonna be for um like if you have like a modular pack like this there's a lot of packs you can get like this where you have this asset from a pack, but it doesn't like none of the doors are on, none of the windows are on, and you gotta customize these yourself, and you can, but I wanna kind of automate it a little bit. Scooch just a little bit back from the sun. <laughs> okay. So let's uh let's start with uh making a lovely new folder. Uh CG. Um, well, actually, everything's going to go in here. Everything's going to go in PCG. So I'm just going to make a... Uh, let's go with... Mm. I'm... Ooh, I have an idea. I'm going to just make a PCG actor. Uh, 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 um... Uh, wait, did I not enable PCG? I didn't enable PCG. Procedural. Sure. You love it. Oh, I'm glad you like the series. You started Unreal a year ago. Yeah. Well, I mean. <laughs> You say you started a, a, a Unreal a year ago, but I mean, how long do you think PCG has been out for? Like a year, <laughs> I think now. So, yeah, it's it's not exactly a, we know everything about it yet, so. <laughs> oh yeah, no, get some sleep. This is going to be for the tutorial uh, for Sunday's video. So you're going to see a nicely edited version on Sunday come out. And then you can just watch it then. So don't feel like you need to stay up. This is going to be like testing and getting ready for that video, figuring out, figuring all the stuff out, see what works, what doesn't work, you know, stuff like that. That's, that's what today's all about. Couldn't code at all? Don't worry, I can't code either. I can't code either. So it's okay. <laughs> uh, Absolutely. 
Yeah, so get, get sleep. That's that's far more important. So I have this. Yep, all the VODs stay up. Yep. So you can always just also watch the VODs. That's right. I have this volume and I'm actually going to get. I'm actually going to give this thing a tag. Uh, I'm just call it a building. Uh, um, get actor data. All world actors by tag. Building. Uh, and this is going to be get single point. I just sample that. Ah, so okay. So now we have the building as a point. <laughs> it's done. Are we are we are we modular now? Are, is, is everything great? Uh, let's look. Bam! Look at that. <laughs> Problem solved, right? We're, we're good? No, no, okay. So, we need to place some stuff on it. And the way I was going to do it is with sockets. So, let's try this. So, I'm going to call this door. Uh, one. I'm not going to worry about rotation or anything. I'm just going to place them and then I'll worry about rotation later. Okay, this is already door four. It's fine. Don't worry. They're not going to be in order. <laughs> So, if I have those everywhere, now under advanced, there's a tag, and I'm gonna call this door. I'm gonna copy it. Paste. 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 Now, uh, if I search socket, um, execute blueprint socket, smash socket supports. Please tell me I can okay I can pipe in the static mesh here. Okay, so I need to put this in a blueprint then. I need to put it in a blueprint so I can get this info. I can't do it this way. That's fine. I don't want to do it in a blueprint anyway. Yeah, let's put it in a blueprint. New blueprint class. Um Honestly, I could do it as an actor. I don't need to do the... I'll start with an actor and then like a regular actor without a spine or anything. Um, assembled building. So add a static mesh. And set this as the default. Uh, here, make it easier on myself. Construction script. Set static mesh. So variable. Uh, why can't I do it? Name already in you. Oh, by the what this? Uh, 
I put a space in there. Sue me. <laughs> Here. Building. There. Make it exposed. And I'll put that in there, actually. And so now, what we can do is, inside of the... He oh, and we also need to add the PCG in here. Okay. Don't need you anymore. Um, don't need you. No way of getting rid of you. I can leave the player start and all that. Okay. Right, so we have this building. It's a blueprint. Don't need the tag. So what we can do now is get self. Single point. That's fine. Um, what we need is get actor property. Static mesh. It's here. So the tags that we're getting is door. Static mesh is piped in. And then I can do copy points. Source. Target. Is it gonna work that way? Is it not gonna work that way? I've not used mesh. What? It, why is it outputting any? If I pipe in. If I detach this, I'm just gonna make this actually the mesh just so I can test this. same one it should get the socket information from this oh you know i can also uh, do the preview here that's actually convenient so i can rotate them in here but Because it should have information here. Let's go to Google. This is what I was talking about. It's never as simple as I think. Why is this not working? the unreal <laughs> yeah the cow main i don't have those commands because fo follows right they're just like how long have i clicked the free button to to get noted to just see when someone's live so i was like mm. <laughs> i don't have stuff like that enabled <laughs> i'm actually like whenever uh, in other channels where i have when that's a thing 
and someone use that command, I unfollow and refollow and then show my follow age of three seconds. <laughs> I'm that guy. Uh, da -da -da -da. Why? Okay, where is the... Unreal did their, uh, like, demo. Uh, all right. Unreal did their demo, and they used uh, sockets. I don't know if you guys seen this video. They used sockets to place... Uh, I might have gone too far. Question is This is the one that's just the point. Let's find out why. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, here we go. I suck it to points. Yeah, just just copy points. Hold on. Yeah. And why is it not working in that case? Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Maybe it just doesn't preview it? The spawner? What about the spawner? Or a spawner? Um, I'm gonna add one. I'm gonna put a spawner cube. Ah, okay. So it works. But it doesn't display. So I was upset. So I did everything correctly, but this just doesn't display. Yeah, this doesn't display when you debug. But you can totally spawn on top of it. And. Okay. So let me just take. One of these. Q in here. Q in here. Okay, so let's uh, fix this up. Let's go in here. Uh, door three. Five. Around. This is going to be 180. Yep. Okay, and so you guys are probably already seeing what I'm where we're going with this. Uh probably add another one right there as a potential option. So I'm gonna add another like four or six. You down right there and if i force regen okay, catch catch um ba -ba -ba -ba. is it because i need to save this oh no it's because i'm stupid i need to put door here there we go So now I have uh, doors in all of them. Of course, I don't want doors in all of them. We only want some of them to be doors. 
Um, so let's do a, a noise. And uh, then we do a filter. And let's say, Zero two point two three. There you go. So we have one of the doors. Uh, we can do a little more. Right, do more, and we have more doors. So what we can do now is expose this, uh, chance of door. Make this a float. Exposed. We'll make this uh, 0.2 by default. So duplicate this. Chance of door. Uh, upper bound. So now, already, I can just go bam, and change the chance of the door. So, uh, that's good, but we want to also, uh, I also want to control the seed. So I'm going to uh, add a new one called seed. There's going to be an integer exposed, and that's going to go into here, this noise. So we can effectively keep the same amount of points. Ads are here, oh, pausing for ads. Let's wait for ads. Let's wait for ads. What we're gonna do is, um, where there's no doors, We'll give the option for windows. Um, and of course we'll add windows and maybe overhangs and whatever else, right? And we'll give a priority to one over the other, etc., etc. Hey, Joseph, welcome in. Welcome in. I have to block. I have blinds down, but they're so shit blinds that I actually have to cover the blinds because the sun is just getting in my eyes, which covers my eyes. And the camera's, camera's right there. I'm basically covering myself from you guys. That's how annoying of a position this is right now for me. It's like I have to go like here for me not to be in the, in the sunlight. It's the worst. I might need to like put up my, uh, I bought the like, the, the the paper that blocks light entirely that you can just like put up because I don't have the curtains for them. But like I don't I don't own caps. What'd you miss during the week? Uh game progress. Lots of game progress. <laughs> Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna have I have a solution for you guys. I'm gonna take you guys, there you guys are, I'm gonna move you to this monitor. Now, I'm not looking at you when I talk, but at least I can read what you're saying. <laughs> so, I'm gonna be smart about this and do that. Also, ads are done, so let's, let's continue. <laughs> okay, so, um, we're good there. <sighs> It's always an easy fix. <laughs> Shouldn't have to be an easy fix. Just not need to be a problem. Um, okay, the next thing I want to do is though, um, right, these are great, but let me see about, um, I could do like staircases and stuff like that as well. They don't really work here, but they 
uh, for this building. So here's what we can do. Some of these are, are, they, are any of these smaller? No. Mm. Oh, here we go. Right, this stuff. We can, uh, we can have this stuff. Like up in the air, like up here. And control what's, uh... Okay. But is, are any of these good for the lower level? We have this. And we could control whether or not uh, it has these, but I f but at that point, like, I don't think that's quite as interesting. Because uh, th I feel like th that's just going to be a separate piece entirely. But for these kind of pieces, we can do these kind of pieces. Right, we can do these kind of pieces because they can just stick out like this. Uh, right, we could have these kind of pieces here. And they can change things around. So, let's try with them. How do we... I don't know if I can get the static mesh property from this. Because I only get the, the static mesh from this. I don't get what it spawns. So it might be a matter of... having multiple modular pieces. Okay, let's, let's, okay, let's go back to the... just to this... Um, Let's do... Okay, so this is going to spawn the doors. Great. Let's do... Uh, do another noise. Another density filter. Um, I don't need to do it from here. I can do it from here. Doesn't matter. C goes into C. Oh, uh, um, no, I do want a different seed here. So I'm going to just. I don't remember if I can do this. Can I just put in ten here. No data providing pin B. Okay. It has to be a, uh, it has to be data. Hey, Saren Cat, welcome in. You want modular building testing and then watch this dumb dumb try to create two and a half D gainery? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. That's, that's that's the plans for today. <laughs> uh let me add a new uh graph settings. No, not graph settings. Uh, oh, here's parameters. I'm blind. I am blind today, guys. I am blind. Um, game be a float. Give it a 10. Seed. Offset. Seed offset. There you go. So this is going to give me just a different noise for this. Uh, and then here I can do, um, windows. And let's grab some windows. Um, here's a windows. Window. 
window. I'll grab these square ones as well. Actually, uh, no, I'll give it these four round ones. And then we'll have a chance of doing the square ones or the round ones. And I'm going to duplicate these. And on the second one, I'm going to do the square ones. So some of them will have, like, square windows. Some of them will have round windows. We'll keep it consistent. Okay. I have no idea of modular building. You literally just make a big sprite for the place and then add headboxes. There you go. I mean, that's basically all you need to do. <laughs> That's all you need to do. Um, so now... Uh, oh, is it bugged out? Clean up, yep. Delete. Clean up. Generate. All right, so we have the windows, but they're like all the way on the ground. Uh, we also need to have a new variable that uh, chance of uh, window, right? And this one's gonna be defaulted. Uh, I'm gonna say one for default. I just wanna make it 0.5. 0 .5. And here it's gonna be you. Chance of window. Round. Okay, so now we have there you go, a couple windows there, there, no window, window. But right, we don't want windows where there's doors. We want to cut those out, so use a difference. And we just cut this out, and now Oh, uh, the difference needs to be here. Binary. So this cuts it out from the, uh, based on the shape of this mesh. Because maybe your doors are different sizes, right? Now, we also need to offset these, uh, windows, so... Transform points. And let's move these guys up. 100 units. 200 units. 150. Let's make it 150 to 200. Or maybe 100 to 200. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And maybe a little bit um, side to side. So let's do uh, negative 25. Uh, no, we don't want to go in depth. Although maybe in depth a little bit. So some of them st will stick out a little more. Some of them will stick in a little more. And they'll be a little bit different. And I can also now integrate some randomness in the rotation. Maybe uh, fives, maybe a little too strong. Let's go maybe two, two degrees, just a little bit here and there. And we'll do the same thing for the doors. Uh, minus the offset up. We don't want the offset up. Uh, we actually don't want to offset them in either. So maybe a little bit out, but never in. And actually, let's do the same thing here. Never in, only out. Because we don't want them to accidentally clip inside of them. So they'll move a little bit left to right and potentially forward a little. And, right, and they're offset upwards. So now we have right, these, but we only have the circle windows. And I can do, change the seat on this. And that will get us different doors. 
and different windows. Uh, also, I need to do it here. Okay, so we do that here, but not in the right. That's not quite where we want. Also, this one's way too low. So let's do 150 to 200 or maybe even 250. Have them a little higher. Do 150 to 200. Because to come more or less a little bit unrealistic, like if a building um, a house, then the window should be positioned the same depth. Yeah, I'm going more of a like a stylish cartoony look. Yeah, we, here, we can kill, kill the pushed out part. There we go. Simple as that. 250, 200 to 250. There you go. All right, so here, this is what I was worried about, but not being pushed out enough. Right, I now see that bar behind them. But if I push it out further, I don't see that bar. And that's why I want to push it out a little bit. So maybe I'll just push it out just 10, 10 units. Just a little bit. So make sure that this thing isn't clipping through. That's, that's, that was the main reason why I did it. Okay. So, but we also want to have the option between these being round or square. So... What I can do is I can randomize it. Uh, uh, how do I want to do it? The greatest part of building something is decorate the inside. I mean, that's personal preference. Depends what kind of game you're doing. When you're using these kind of pieces, you're not even making interiors. You're specifically just to make a city. And it's entirely, like, yeah, it depends on what, what kind of stuff. Some people really like the outside. Some people like to decorate inside. You know, it's personal preference on that point. Um, how do we want to do the randomness of whether it's square or not? Because we want to do them all. Uh, what I can do is... I can just add a switch here. Great, you hit both. There you go. <laughs> uh, actually, let's do a um, get graph instance, and we'll do a simple here. Cool. Uh, and we're gonna call it. Um, Random, uh, or just square windows. I'm just gonna copy this. Set uh, pool parameter. Paste this in here. Square windows. Random pool. There we go. Get uh, square windows. Ta-da! Square windows. And if I regenerate, sometimes circular, sometimes square. <laughs> Also, can I, why are these windows so small? Are they actually this small? Yeah, they're that small, but default. Oh. I'm gonna make them larger. He's gonna make them larger. I'm gonna make them between 1.5 and two. In case you don't like how small they were. That feels a lot better. That feels a lot better. And so now we have a generating. And if we don't like, if we like like where it is, but we don't want to, we want a different setup. We can change this. If we want less doors, right? We can just reduce the amount of doors. Okay. 
So there we go. That that window's way too big. <laughs> that is now way too big. Okay, 1.5 max. Let's go like 1.2 to 1.5. <laughs> They are usually, but if you look at Russian church, they have all sorts of colors. What? Oh, you don't know the, uh, the theme of the building? But aren't roof tiles usually red? It looks... I mean, this is a fantasy building. This is not realistic. This is not a realistic style at all. It just... I mean, I, I don't... <laughs> it doesn't matter. What, build, what color they are in real life does not matter to me. Um... Will there be a smoking chimney? Uh, is there a smoking chimney uh, asset here? Oh, there's a, there is a chimney here. We can add chimneys. Yeah, there are chimneys. Let's do a chimney next. So let's come here. And I'm going to add a new socket called... Uh, chimney one. Uh, chimney. Can I duplicate this chimney? I can. Oh, yeah. Now I just have to retype in the tag. Because <laughs> I'm being lazy. Uh, I'll even put one, like, maybe down here. Jimmy four. Would be me... Would Wood beams uh, not support the integrity of the building. How is this possibly set? Fantasy. Instead of having a chance of window or doors, it's possible to define how many doors and windows you want. Yes, it requires you to create a custom node, though. Um, and I have a tutorial in my building series um, that shows how to do that. Creates like a custom amount. I think there's a few other tutorials on online on how to specify exact numbers. Yeah. We're just not going to go into creating custom, uh, custom stuff for this. Yeah, it's, it's possible. Make one with purple roof and call it. I don't know the reference. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know the reference. Uh, Yeah, but uh, let's say we are happy with this. Uh, let's go ahead and now spawn in. So we want. Actually, yeah, let's keep this plugged in. This was going to be a uh, chimney. have this separated out. It really does not need to be connected. So here. Uh, static mesh spawner. And um, here we just add some chimneys in. We don't want all these chimneys. So. Add an attribute noise. Uh, and density filter. I can already do a point 0.1. And right, like for this, you'd want like specify like um, only one. 
right? Because now if I do like, they just happen to both select like super low numbers. And so the chance of them happening is just very high. But if I do like 0.05, usually you'll have one. This one has three, right? So this is just the chances of it spawning. But you can change the seed. Let's say you had one uh, 0 0.05 chance, right? If I had like this and I want to just, I like this position, but I want it to be different, just change the seed. Um, oh, uh, I need to change the seed on this, the attribute noise. Where's the seed? Now, the seed will also change the... Right, so you can change this way. This way. Hey, Mad Laugh, welcome in. Welcome, welcome. Uh, this is not for a game. This is for uh, the Sunday's uh, PCG video tutorial. I'm making, uh, I'm setting up a PCG graph to uh, assemble building modularly based on like modular pieces you get and just show how to do it. It's going to be for uh, the Sunday's video. It's really weird looking in this direction because it's, oh, is the sun, the sun's down. The sun's down, I'm moving you guys back so I can actually like more look at you guys when I'm talking to you. <laughs> yeah, once we're, once we finish with this, uh, then we can uh, go to the gameplay again. So let's go with this. Um, do I want to set up a, no, I don't really want to do a, a, a select amount of points graph. That's, that's a video in and of itself. For now, for, for this tutorial is going to be, this is plenty. So this is, um, uh, Chimneys. Uh, this is um, bottom doors, windows. And now let's do the upper level. So let's do upper window and not you, not you. Uh, I'm going to just take all of this take you take you duplicate it here Copy you. <laughs> the wood beams are made from magical kind of wood that's capable of supporting 200% more. Yeah, exactly. See? Oh, you're the reference? <laughs> I see. Okay, okay, I understand now. Sorry. <laughs> I I completely missed. I don't know why I'm so bad about. I, I skipped like five lines of chat today, and this is unacceptable. Completely unacceptable. <laughs> um, this is for the upper upper window so so we're gonna need one here and we're gonna put I'm gonna put it right in the center of this thing one here and yeah one here 
One thing we can do actually is make it so there's a chance of not having anything. And we can do that in a few ways. Well, it's already doing that for the or oh, it's already doing that for the windows. Yeah, it's already doing that. The windows and doors. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to remove some of the chimneys. You just have too many chimneys for the way it's being generated right now. So I'm going to remove uh, this guy. I keep one and four. Sometimes there'll be two chimneys, but there'll never be like three chimneys here anymore. I like that a little better. Okay. Um, so now we want to spawn in right the upper side of spawner, uh, and we also want to uh, chance of upper windows. Uh, now the upper windows, mm, we'll give it also a chance of spawning. Uh, chance of uh, upper window. But the chance of upper window by default, oh, I'll keep it up 0.5. I was going to say it should be 1. We just always have it, but nah. That's too, that's, that's too simple. Bounce. Okay, and then here we need to the upper window. So the upper windows are going to be like these guys. Um, that's a door. Those are doors. I just put in doors. Uh, we can have these actually on the bottom for the door section. Just realized. These are doors. I'll make these a little more interesting. Uh, where are the windows? I had windows that were sticking out. Uh, these two? Oh, here they are. Here they are. Oh. Ads are here. Ads pausing are. for ads. Pausing. We're pausing. Gotta pause for ads. Pause for ads. Ads. <laughs> We're already getting a, a little uh, modular house. Also, uh, I need to lower that. Yeah, I need to lower that. And rotate that. Here, I'll, I'll rotate that now. We'll fix the rotation on these now. While ads are going. Because that should not be anything. Uh, did I rotate that in the right way? Yes. Uh, no. Uh, this is the way. There we go. <laughs> uh, but also, I should lower them. I should lower them. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait for ads. Wait for ads. <laughs> now we'll, we'll, we'll adjust the, uh, the, uh, the, the height on these and give it a little bit of uh, offsets. And you can see right, it's already spawning on only two of the three sides and that's on every one of them because we only have 50% chance of spawning them. 
But the main thing of this is once it's done, that's the main thing, is we can use this to spawn a lot of stuff. Okay, as they're done, I'm going to just take... Can I select multiple of these? I can't. Can I set the height on these to 500? Basically lower them a little because of the way their pivot is set up. Yeah, that's a lot better. Look at that. That's more of where I wanted it. Ta-da! Can one mesh have more chance of spawning than another? Yes. So when you do a static mesh spawner, inside of each one it has a weight. So if I want more of one thing than another, I just give it more weight. So I can put like 10 times higher chance of spawning this than this. Um... Oh, I didn't finish uh, populating all these with the windows. <laughs> it's a door. Let's, let's fix that. There. I'll just fill in the rest of these. <laughs> That's a. We don't want a door up there. I mean, maybe you guys want a door up there. I don't really want a door up there. Right? And now if I want like all of them to have a, a window guaranteed, I just put one and then now all three of them have a window, but right, this one's kind of is inset a little bit. So I'm going to do a transfer points here. And let's start by offsetting these by at least a little bit. Uh, oh, I'm doing rotation. Ten. Twenty. Oh no no no! It's not off. It's not off. Uh, it's not input. It's just the way it is. So let's do ten. And yeah, ten is fine. We'll do ten. It's the same thing we did on the other ones. Ten is fine. Uh, and then I'll add like a slight rotation on these, so they're not perfectly lined up. And maybe now I can offset them a little bit higher. Like a little bit. That all depends on the pivot points. It's, no, it's not doors anymore. I was planning on making a balcony. Yeah, if I want a balcony, I can do that. But these are windows now. We have now windows. It's all good. So now, right when we move this around, we have random doors, random windows, random chimneys, all for the shape. Now, the point of this is once you have the graph kind of how you want it, say upper uh, windows. Right. This is a relatively simple setup, right? I mean, it's not even relatively simple. It's just a simple setup. So now what I can do is go find another building and put the same stuff there. So let's say I want to make an attachment to this building. Well, maybe I want to uh, attach this thing to it. Right. Let's say I want to do this. Now, let's set it up where I can do that easily. Now, I can already more or less do that by going here, dragging this out, sampling you, typing you in here, right? And then we have this blueprint, but we need to add the sockets in here. And there's some other stuff I want to do. Like I when I do this, I want to cut away. I want to remove these. So, we'll see how best to do that. And I don't know if it's going to be possible. It might be a matter of find the best place and then put this in. But let's go into this thing. 
and I'm going to add a little stock manager or one or Okay, and then we're going to need a door three. And a window. Uh, I think it's called upper window. how we called it and put you here and just to make sure I'm calling the tags the same just copy this right but you already see that now right this thing has all of the same uh this stuff and now if I move this right I now have the generating the same pieces and I can play around with the seed and generate different stuff. Now I want to cut away from the other one. Right? If we're here, I want to cut away. So let's do this. We have this. We can do um all world actors, and I'm gonna give this thing a tag. Uh, modular building. I tag building. And what I want to do is not spawn anything if it's overlapping it. So do a difference. And this is the source. You're the difference. So now, if I did this, hold on. This is what? Oh, these are the windows. Uh, let me do this for the doors as well. Okay, so now wherever this is, it won't spawn, but it's, uh, it is also affecting itself. Um, it's affecting itself, and that's what I was worried about. Hey, JV the Wonder. Yeah, absolutely, you can make PCG to make random buildings. Yeah, why not? You can use PCG for all sorts of things. It's just randomly uh populating something based on points all modular buildings are is just an assembly of points what i want to do is right these points are just way too big so i'm going to do a bounds modifier sample this and i'm going to in here so I can just do both at once. Now here, I'm going to do like 0.8. Do like 0.7. Okay. So now if I was to move this a little bit over... Just make sure this is on different binary. Is 
it might be a little bit too... Right, if it's either too small or too big. Right, so it's either going to take care of all of them or not, it seems. So, hmm. This might not be quite possible. I might need to do like a secondary piece. But why is uh, this? Oh, you know what it is? When I update this, this is all fine. I need to update this thing. Oh no, it's still facing the door there. Oh, it's because it's because these points aren't exactly uh, large. You're just seeing uh, being used for lab mass and trees. Yeah, that's the common thing. But like, I've built an entire procedural building with BCG and some other stuff. It's, you can be. Do all sorts of things with PCG. It's awesome. I've even made a spawner with PCG for real-time applications as well. Hey, Sean. Welcome in. How's it going? I'm doing well. Is the thing with bounds and proof? Yeah, so... Right, the, the problem is... Right, this is the bounds of this model, right? But I can't use it to prune these things but because well i'm placing them on that model uh oh hold on ignore self and children hold on i missed that one <laughs> i missed that checkbox Excellent. So now if I move this. Bingo. Look at that. <laughs> oh, that's great. Now that's working exactly how I want. Perfection. So I just need to do the same thing um, on this. Here, pipe you in, and take you over here, and pipe you in. There we go. Okay, so I can just put this where I want it, and bam. Now we have this building, and I, I don't need to worry about, like, things intersecting and generating differently. And on this piece, I can just, you know, populate it under different uh, setup. And if I wanted to, right, because I have this door just all the way here, but normally I have to push it in quite far. On this piece, because of the way it is, I can go to uh, this pivot and just scooch it over, let's say, here. And scooch this pivot on this thing here. And if I regenerate this, right, we now have, play around with the seed. Uh, oh, let me do chance of door one. Yeah, so I need to just pull this out. Okay, I need to move the door just a little bit further forward. And this door a little bit further forward. So like here. Yeah, so there you go. Now let's put this chance back down, right? And so now I can have it closer here, attached, and we still got the windows or doors. Well, yeah, a simple checkbox can, yeah, exactly. Simple checkbox can uh, change a lot. Ignore self and children, very important checkbox. 
Very important checkbox. That's what today's all about, is uh, learning all this stuff. Okay, so if I, for example, went in and now had like a bunch of uh, these set up. So right now I've set up this piece and um, and this piece. But let's say I also go in and set up like another piece. Do you want to set up this one? Let's set up this piece next. Just so we can have like three different pieces. Okay. This is door. Since this is going to be, this is the same at all sides. So I can attach it from any side, which is great. So this one, rotate 90. Put you over here. Rotate 90. And place this over here. Rotate 90. So, and then let's add upper one. Have one on this side, on this side. And now, right, with it all set up, all I need to do is just take one of these, drag it out, swap it out to this one, and you can see it already has, like, all the pieces for it. And now I can use this um, as just a modular piece. I can just embed uh, in wherever I want. Probably on this side, all things considered. And there we go. It's going to cut itself out. Anything that was there is going to be cut out. And now uh, I can change the seat on this one. Change the amount of doors. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> so all of a sudden, the, this, this set that where you're placing all these windows and doors manually is now a lot better. This one is a little bit off on the, on the door front. So we can go in here. Three, right. Maybe scooch this one forward. There you go. <laughs> you learn a lot. Thanks to me. Well, I'm glad. Well, have a good one. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Barring on a mission to get some coffee. Ooh, coffee is good. I said that, but I don't drink coffee. <laughs> have a good one on Phil Cafe. Hey, uh. Trammel and twice. Tram. I see the twice. I don't see the word before it. That's probably because I don't know the word before it. <laughs> Trammel and twice. Hello. <laughs> How much stuff are you doing right now? Can be done by an LLM. I don't know what an LLM is. There's an almost cold place. You want warm me? Ah, okay. Well, thanks for that. Tremolent equals Dutch for trouble. Ah, okay. Well, that explains why I don't understand it. <laughs> that that explains why why uh, I, I didn't understand the word. <laughs> now things make sense. But yeah, so now I can go here, right? We can make this building. Something like this. In fact, we can go here and then maybe even extend it further this way. Just for the hell of it, because we can. Right, we can just do something like, like this. And there we go. We even have the door here still. 
around with the seed. Alright. I think this is pretty cool. So once you do all of the um, the pieces, um, well, equal this I don't think it's gonna be doing. All of the stuff you can do, like with Houdini and stuff, like there's tools already for it. Like this is not like magic, and it can only be done now. Houdini has been doing this for years and a bunch better. But now it's available in Unreal, and you can do it in Unreal. But the point is now, right? I can now set up. With this one blueprint and then going in and just setting up all these static meshes i can go in and just really quick uh assemble these buildings and not need to worry about placing the windows in and i think that's pretty good and each one of these buildings is or uh, automatically instances all the windows and doors that it uses within itself which is great now they're not instanced between each other so it's not, you know, the best. But what the thing that's stopping me from doing that is the fact that the static mesh spawner, it doesn't have a um, a static mesh output. So if I was to like, right? So it spawns these, but it's just spawning them based on the point information. If I was able to pipe that static mesh into here, into the mesh to sockets, then that's it then i could just scatter them as well but with these pieces you wouldn't want to scatter them anyway it's more of like right you want to assemble it a little more manually but i think that's when and we're going here the seed there's a door there Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty uh, pretty satisfied with this. Now, out of curiosity, if I go ahead and scale this, right, everything gets scaled. Ah, the problem is uh, that offset is. Oh yeah, that's another. Delete. Those offsets are not based on scale. We can fix that. We can fix that. Um, I'm going to fix that because I can. Let's go here. Uh, There's going to be a float. Name um, actor scale. Set float um, parameter. Actor scale. Uh, get actor scale. And I'm going to just take the average. Um, Wait, uh, no, I can't. okay. Add them all. And it's not perfect, but it's fine. And so now, uh, where's that transform up? Uh, we w we're doing that for. These guys, I right, using 200 uh, to 50. So I'm going to do offset min, uh, multiply, oh, OK. Oh, it's a vector. Actually, no, this, this, this works. This works. Um, let's go back here. Graph settings. This is a vector. I forgot that it takes vectors. Actor scale. Perfect. Um, here. Set vector parameter. 
actor scale. Recombine. <laughs> Unreal is trying to be all one software. Animation 5 4 make you feel that way. I mean, every software wants to be the one uh, software. Because that means you have more re like more reasons to use it and not go anywhere else. And if you are stuck and you can do everything in Unreal, if you can model Unreal, texture Unreal, and do everything in Unreal, right? You're take you they don't no one needs any other software. And if you don't need the other software, you're not gonna you're not gonna use it. It's a matter of convenience. But it has to be good enough. You either the way you get people to come to you to do like use your software over someone else, you either need to be more convenient than any other options, or you need to be more powerful than any other option. That's that's how you get people. For example, Houdini is more powerful than any other option. So there's no alternative to Houdini for the, some of the stuff that Houdini does. PCG is great. It's not going to pull people away from, from it. But in the terms of convenience, for doing stuff like this, I no longer need to do for Houdini because it is more convenient. So, you know, in that aspect, Unreal is pulling people away from Houdini. But for the more complex stuff, it's not. You're saying the next AI can create basically anything you want, but you, yeah, yeah. Let's let's wait for that to happen, and then we can say that's actually going to happen. Pixar, when I was in college, Pixar was talking about Ptex. I don't know if you guys heard of it or know anything about Ptex from Pixar. It was um, going to be a revolutionary way of texture painting where you no longer had to UV map. Now I. I graduated college in 2011. Is that the industry standard? It's not. It's not the industry standard. It's not everywhere. Ptex is amazing, yeah. But it's it's not everywhere. It's not replaced everything, right? It's a tool. It has limitations, has some problems. It's good in certain scenarios. It's not good in other scenarios, like any other tool. So... Never say something's going to be replaced. We thought we we're going to have flying cars by now. Where are they? Right? Until it's here, don't think it's going to do anything. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, it still exists, Sean. Yeah, exactly. It still exists, but it's, it's not a standard. And when, uh, when I was in college and it was like, I think that was around the time when it was being either developed or just came out. I don't remember. Uh, and like I tried it and it was, it was a really early version and I was like okay cool but it was still like UVing was better and these days I haven't heard anything about it I haven't heard anything about it in 10 years the first thing I've heard of it now is Sean saying that he's using it in Blender once that's it that's the first thing I've heard of it in 10 years aside from me bringing it up Yeah, for film work, yeah, it, it's not in games, right? And in games is where you'd want it probably the more. There was also, uh, back in when I was in college, there was a game engine or something that was being developed that was going to be, instead of polygon-based, you could do uh, subdivisions. So if, if you don't know, you can do sub-D modeling, where it's effectively like clicking smooth on something. And so you have infinite topology because it smooths it out. A cube will just become a perfect sphere. Where's that? People were gonna say, people were saying, yeah, regular old poly model is gonna go away. That still hasn't gone anywhere. I haven't heard anything about it since. Right? Until something, until you show me it in action, it is here and it's being released to the public and it's gonna be easily accessible. The whole, it's eventually something will happen. I don't, don't believe it. Like I'll, uh, sure, it will happen eventually. Everything will happen eventually. Eventually, we'll, none of us will need to work a day in our lives. Is it going to happen in our lifetime? Who knows? But until it's here, don't stop doing what you're doing. Don't stop learning. Don't do anything. 
Because it's, it's, it's crazy to just say, yeah, we're all going to get replaced and, uh, you know, wh why bother? <laughs> like like some people have on uh, on social media have said, like uh, the CEO of NVIDIA, I believe. Is he the one that said uh, we shouldn't uh, program anymore? <laughs> what? <laughs> crazy stuff. Uh... Yeah, a few students are using to yeah bypass UV work. But here's the thing: why are they doing it for film? That's the question I want to ask. Because film work is unlimited texture resolution. You don't have a budget. You can make infinite UDIMs if you want, as long as you have the hardware to support it. You can have infinite <laughs> stuff. So. Games is where you'd want to be able to uh, minimize that stuff. Yeah. You're an a player, uh, um, airplane avionic. So no secrets for you about flying car? Yeah. We have flying cars. We call them airplanes. And exactly. There are personal helicopters. People have been developing those, right? But that's not going to be a common thing for everyone. That's a like a, a fun ride you can hire for someone. So like airplane taxis are a thing in some places. That's no one's, we have so many car accidents on the ground. No one's ever gonna make flying cars a regular thing. Jesus, I mean that. Can you imagine? Imagine driving on the street and then uh, someone took hits in a car uh, into an accident in the air. Hey, there's gonna be just it's gonna be raining cars or whatever they're gonna call, be called, right? It's gonna be insanity. It's never gonna be happening. <laughs> Unless it's a fully automated system that has like a 99.999 success rating because you can't even have a 1% failure on that thing. 1% failure is raining down cars. <laughs> Think of how, like, because, right, if I, uh, like, in a 1 million population city, if you have a 1% failure, you know, that's 10,000 cars flying from the sky and crashing and killing people. <laughs> Not happening. <laughs> and if you, uh, a 1% failure is fantastic in like in the tech industry, I'm pretty sure. The only thing you have to accomplish is fill every pixel in 4K for one hour and a half and you should have a movie. <laughs> Sort of, yeah. ChatGPT is useless to be honest, even in lost stuff. ChatGPT is great for, let me show you quickly. There's a detour, that's fine. So uh, uh, for my game, right? I um, I do a directional sprite uh, renders. So I have this animation and when I render it out of Blender, I get my sprite, but Right, I need to go in here and then I need to rotate the camera to let's say 45 degrees. Then right, then I would need to render out a new image sequence and make sure it's you know in a different place for call differently, right? And then I need to do that, and then I need to do it again for all eight directions. I use Chat GPT to write me this script. I press play and it does eight directions rendering and outputs everything in the order I want. This is what ChatGPT is great for. Right here. Fantastic. I'm not a programmer. At all. But thanks to knowing what I wanted, I can go and create this simple script that now, you know, and this is 3.5. This is not even the, the fancy one. Hey, Guga Guto. Welcome in. It's great. I should have seen it as an assistant. Yeah, exactly. It is a fantastic assistant. Fantastic assistant. And that's what I used it as, right? I knew what I wanted. I wanted it to render something out. And then uh, and then I have an actor that just I needed to re-rotate. Then rotate this thing 45 degrees and then uh, name, like render it and output the name with based on the direction with certain words, right? And I, it took me like an hour to write this. An actual programmer could write this in five minutes. It took me like over an hour to uh, to do this with ChatGPT. 
and like okay because i'm like well it doesn't work i don't know why it doesn't work like i know the general idea but i don't know how to fix it in code blueprints sure but not in code so yeah this is where ChatGPT is great as a fantastic assistant and now i have that You do the same thing in Geonodes and Blender too? Yeah, you can do a lot of things in Geonodes too. Yeah. Okay, let's, uh, let me quickly go back here. Uh, uh, get actor scale. Look that in there. Um, why can't I see? I wish I could just put a number in here. Can I really not put a number in here? Generic? None? No, none is just not. What is the point of this node? I don't know what the point of that node is. Okay, I, I've snoozed three times now. <laughs> I can't snooze anymore. <laughs> Some light program is the best feature. It is, yeah. And that's light programming or brainstorming chat gpt is fantastic if you just need ideas like if you just go on chat gpt and be like hey i'm you know i want to make a game with like this parameters or like i have like i'm planning to make a game with uh like a top down hack and slash and i need some abilities for my weapons can you just generate like a hundred ideas for me like for my weapon it'll do it I'd say 90% of them will be complete crap. But you know, you might take like those 10 that are pretty good and be like, okay, I can work with this, this, and we and if I modify these to kind of suit my needs, and then all of a sudden I can use those. And it's great for like, you know, imagine you have like a hundred 10 year olds. Yeah, some of those 10 year olds will give you some pretty good ideas. You still need to work with them, you need to adjust them, you need to, you know, modify them for your needs, but they're a great starting point. I think, uh, yeah, I think it's great for that. Organize ideas and make association between, yeah, that's also a good one. Brainstorming, yeah, brainstorming, exactly. ChatGPT 5 is going to be as revolutionary as go going 3 to 4. 3 to 4 wasn't as revolutionary as I think it is, as people say it is. I saw 4. It's good, it's better, but until it's there, right? It's just, it can get better and better and better, but until it hits the level where it can replace something, it's still not good enough and so it's not replacing anything is the way I see it. If you still, you know, need to do it manually in the end, then you still need to do it manually in the end. Um, I'm gonna just add a simple Uh, oh wait, no, this is, oh no, I don't need this, I don't need this. I, I can fuss to myself. Uh, the actor scale is multiplied by, oh, the offset. Uh, let's do... Offset min. Can I duplicate this? I can't. Offset max. Fifty. Worthy values here. Negative twenty five and positive first ten. you grab one and move forward yeah exactly it's fantastic for that the scary thing is that even i know how to get the metal large language model on your computer locally without filters there you go 
Yeah, there's a lot of tutorials for that. Chat with RTX kind of offers that, but it's mostly trying. Yeah. And that's the thing, like, until once it's good enough, it's going to be good enough. But until then, until then, sit in and Uh, this is for the windows, and I'm going to, need to do the same thing. So if I did this now, there you go. What, I'll pro what probably is an easier way of doing this is uh, just having a new pivot up top, honestly. So you just have a door pivot, a window pivot, and an upper window pivot. And then that just solves the problem. You don't need to do this actor. So probably for the tutorial, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to show how to do that. I won't do this uh, system because it's just a little bit messy. GPT-3 was sending in the message. Wait a minute, there might be something in here. GTP-4 was <laughs> holy fuck. <laughs> We're so close. <laughs> What's the good of you probably won't be able to run with an A100? I mean, we're not lo running it locally right now anyways, the majority of us. That's why we have to pay subscriptions, right? But that's where I'd like, right? That's where you'd want it to be. It's something we can all run locally. But until then. Cool, so there you go. So now I can scale this and it all scales accordingly. Ta-da! I think this is pretty successful. It's anywhere I want. And assemble a building. Looks a bit silly. Uh, oh, can I do, like, weird... Ch weird... Uh, oh, I can! And it maintains the scale of the... Uh, Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it maintains scale of stuff. Properly stretches things. Perfect. You miss most of PCG process? Thank God I'll be, yeah. And it'll, it'll be like far cleaner and, you know, more edited. Oh, ads, ads are here. Pausing for ads. I couldn't delay them anymore. <laughs> couldn't delay them anymore. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, yeah, probably do another one, uh, another building shape, and then, and then we effectively have like we have so many options already, really. Cause I can already take this shape and shrink it down. If I wanted to, but it's not gonna really work. Could do that. <laughs> it, no, it, it, it is. Oh, right. Oh, okay, I'm going to show this bug off once, once, uh, stupid PCG bug. Once ads are done, show how to fix it for those of you uh, that encounter it doing PCG stuff. Because it's annoying. It's annoying. Stay hydrated. Good, stay hydrated. Ads are almost done. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, ads are done. But I want to real quick show a bug with PCG that I'm sure some of you guys that work with it have experienced. If you do something, like let's say I scale this up, and like, oh crap, let me just undo it and I press Control Z, and you get this. You get the pieces just floating there. And even if you take this and you move this around, it will regenerate itself. But if you come here and click clean up, it and generate, it doesn't go away. This is a bug with PCG, easy fix for it. In here, you just click on all the HISMs or ISMs, shift click on them, press delete. And now you can go here and do clean up, generate, and it's fine. Stupid bug with PCG. Hopefully it's fixed in 5.4. But yeah, it's been like that since I, since I think it's released. Still find PCG too heavy to use in large scene. So keep in mind, you don't have to keep this as PCG. So the best use of PCG isn't to keep it live. So let's say I've generated this house and I'm happy with this house, right? I'm happy with it. You go down here to PCG and click clear PCG link. And now I can click on this house and I can move it around. Well, click on this and move it around. <laughs> this was the, the actual uh, blueprint is still the blueprint. This got separated out. Uh, let me <laughs> put this back. This piece back. Right, this got separated out. And if I was to spawn the set, this piece by itself, it would also be baked in. So if you were to do like a large scale forest, right, this is this is separated out. But if you did like a large scale forest and you spawn a bunch of trees, you click the clear PCG link button, and then that just becomes an instance blueprint for you. And no more PCG. Very convenient. So then, yeah, there's no PCG to calculate or recalculate. It's just a nicely instanced object. One of my tutorials, you struggle with PCG, but for almost an hour, then you give up and continue the video. And I showed how to fix it. <laughs> well, happy to help. <laughs> happy to help. Yeah, that, that's one of the uh, the problems. Just stupid undo. Control Z. There's the bug. Go in here. Shift click on these. Press delete. And now you're fine. It's an annoying bug with undo. Specific. I don't know why. And you can do it multiple times, actually. If I take this, right, and I did this and press Control Z. Control Z again. Control Z again. It's gonna, it, every time it has selected it, it, it stacked multiple of them in here. And if I click away, I can click on this and it will select it. And here I have like now multiple of these. It just continues to stack it now. And just delete it all, clean up, generate. And... <laughs> Earth will prevail and rule the day. We will conquer. We will take over, and if not, we will make Super Earth. <laughs> we will make Super Earth if we have to. Okay. Um, before we move on to uh, the game dev stuff, you guys got any questions for the PCG side? Now's the time. Now's the time to ask anything you want about this. Or... Or we move on to the the game dev stuff for a bit. Probably won't be for long, but for a bit. I want to uh, probably fix the AI on the spider finally to make it work with my new system. Okay. Move it. Oh, reset. Bam. Uh, and dresses, well, thank you and welcome in. Rebuild. Well, I'm glad you like it. Welcome. 
Welcome. So since yesterday, I went ahead and fixed the AI a bit. So right, th these guys now properly, uh, you know, also patrol me, walk around and stuff uh, and jump atop of me. Uh, or move up and attack me. <laughs> Almost a fun energy. Good. Although I enjoy what I'm doing, right? And so, how does he not jump and attack? I want him to jump and attack me. I think I saw a problem. Stop walking up to me. You have, I think, a 50% chance of jumping to me. There we go. Okay, the fact that he, like, went to my face is a problem. Um, let me fix that real quick. Um, this is going, this is the jump attack sequence. And it's this. And what I want is uh, to have it be a little bit closer. I'm gonna take you, uh, actor forward vector. Multiply uh, negative 100. Oh, what, this, what I'm doing basically is when he was jumping to me, right? He was jumping to my face. I wanted to jump a little bit, not right to that spot, but just a little bit before that spot. And then... And then hopefully he won't... Uh, Collide with my hitbox. Mm, little less. 200. We'll see. And we'll get smarter than us. Oh, yeah. Oh, as us. Yeah. It will definitely get smarter as we get smarter. Absolutely. This is why there are no... Oh, there's definitely aliens. Oh, I see the problem. It's... It's not that the jump location is in the air. Why is he... Why is he so slow falling down there? Still offset it by like minus 100. Do I have gravity modification? Uh, uh, gravity? Not setting the gravity to be wrong anywhere. Um, out of curiosity, uh, oh, I can do that. Reset gravity. I'm gonna confirm that it's this gravity is not like low. Hey, JV the Wonder, welcome in. Good to have you. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll go to uh, the actual level in a second. You guys, those are new. See it? I just want to see him jump to me. Yeah, I don't know why he hangs in the air after jumping to me. It's really odd. Because that's not gravity. Want to jump to me one more time and I move out of the way? 
Yeah, I don't know why he hangs. Oh, wait. I... I think I might know why he hangs. I'm gonna test this real quick and then we'll go to... Uh, I think he's triggering... Uh, am I going airborne? Yeah, I'm making him airborne. Okay, that's the problem. Um, and when he's airborne, he is, he's juggling me. So I'm going to turn this off. Uh, that should do it. I might give him the tag jump. Uh, but... Come on, jump attack, jerk attack me. Jump! Jump, you jerk! Jump! Oh my god. You're just being difficult. Oh. <laughs> this, this jerk! Jump! Thank you, and there we go, that was perfect. Thank you, we're good now. Also, this morning, because today I had a day off. Uh, <laughs> you sound like it will kill us. I mean, most of us are already dead inside, so it's not going to kill us. Don't worry. Can't kill the dead. Um, <laughs> uh, so this morning, I've been modifying this darn dungeon uh, where it wasn't loading. And I figured out a solution. It's a workaround. Let me rephrase that. I figured out a workaround. <laughs> so what I have implemented is in my game mode where this is being generated. <laughs> That's your type of humor. <laughs> Mine too. I've made a force reload. So effectively it's, it's running the build dungeon thing. And then I made it. So I created a timer and after every three seconds, after it starts to build it, it says, are you ready? If the dungeon isn't ready in three seconds, stop building it, pick a new seed and try building it again. And keep doing this until you successfully build it. And once you successfully build it, stop doing this. <laughs> this is a workaround. I'm still waiting to hear a reply and I probably won't hear a reply for like a week. But if I come here and I press play, to show gonna load in oh look at that new seed reloaded so it's tried it once and there we go <laughs> so it failed the first time and then it picked a new seed now it's supposed to do that by default. So if I do that again, right? If I just try going now, it just loaded in. If I go again, it loaded in fine. I go again. It's taking a while, new seed. New seed again. New seed again. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, I use the dungeon architect plugin as well, but it's it has issues. <laughs> I don't know why it's not loading the levels. <laughs> and I really wish there was better, uh, like, di uh, Discord communication with this. Uh, but. This is a multi-level one. I really like this level. This level looks really pretty. I like it. Low time from three seconds to infinity. Yeah. That's... 
Knock you up. Okay. I don't have to kill you anymore. I'm done with you. Doors open. Next. Oh, you know what I want to do? I have the block. Uh, I want to... Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, jumping across. You jerk. Hi, guys. <laughs> what levels are we talking about? Um, so this, uh, this dungeon, I'm using stab grid flow with it. Um, and for some reason, uh, it has a chance of just not generating at all. And, and I don't know why, because I run the, uh, the graph, uh, like the graph checker and I have no fails. And so, because it doesn't fail, I'm like, well, I don't know why it doesn't load. And I've tried everything. It just doesn't load an editor, but it works fine in the, like, the, like the graph mode. Uh, have I cleared enough? I have cleared enough. So, uh, for those of you that don't know, so you see how they are dropping blood? Uh, each enemy has a different amount of blood and I have to spill enough blood in the level to be able to open the doors. If I don't spill enough blood, the doors won't open. So I don't have to kill everyone. I can. And right now, uh, like, there's no benefit to killing more, but eventually they will be dropping experience. And effectively, you can use the... Uh, when you get enough experience, you'll get power-ups. You can pick from like certain power-ups and there'll be multiple like levels you go through. Whee! Jump all the way down. Oh, you jerk! Freaking hit me on the way down. Okay, it says open. That means, oh. Ah, but there's nothing down here. There's no door down here. It's upstairs. Up, right up. <laughs> up, keep, oh, you. Yep. Next. And I already like took care of the system where um, if uh, the door doesn't snap uh, behind me and I get stuck on the other side, we already took care of that uh, instance. I also need to... Uh... Why are you guys not moving? Did I not put a navigation mesh in here? I need to double check my navigation meshes. Uh, yeah, none of you guys are moving. Oh, you're. Oh, you jumped though. That doesn't count. Okay. You were snapping the snap build? Something weird with the levels level bounds? Uh, mesh somehow affected the set? No, I have nothing going out of bounds. So in my like, block out levels, like, everything is within bounds. I have nothing out of bounds on any of them. Um, this is an old light that doesn't need to exist anymore. Uh, I don't have anything out of bounds. Uh, oh yeah, let me just double check. I think the navigation stopped working. For some reason. Because I'm pretty sure that level has navigation. That's a bug of some kind. Not sure from what. 
Yeah, so now, I mean, even if they had something from outside of it, they would still load the level. It just wouldn't attach itself very well. That's the thing. So yeah, all of them have it. This is the one that we were in that they were moving on. Yeah, all of them have navigation. See? So I'm not sure why it broke. But yeah, for some reason, if I go, for example, just into the graph, right, in here, and I click build. Uh, sorry, let me uh, put in my... To make this accurate. Right. So here's my, like, rooms and everything I had built. Right, so I have this build. Uh, now what I can do is I can say... Don't randomize the seed, just build zero. Build seed zero. Build. There's build, uh, there's seed zero. Um, is this the correct one? This does not look right. Why is it? Oh, wait, I opened the wrong one. This one. That's why it doesn't look right. But this one takes a moment, but that's fine. Let me turn this off. I'm going to set seed zero and click build. It generated, right? So, it's, so it has successfully generated on seed zero with my setup, with my like bounds and everything. Here's my room templates. So it knows where everything is. But if I go now to my actual dungeon level, and I select my dungeon and I say seed zero, and then just say, uh, build dungeon. It doesn't build. There are some seeds it refuses to build under the same conditions. Same, same graph, same module database. Have a good night, good guts. Thank you so much for stopping by. Really appreciate it. Seed zero does not build. I've tried different number of retries. I've tried different number of uh, not repeat like I could set non repeating rooms to one. So it just repeats anything it wants. A hundred tries, whatever it wants. I can try all this stuff, click build. It'll, it won't build. I I have no idea what. <sighs> yes, seeds, good point. <laughs> But I mean, like, the point is to uh, show the exact same one. Hey, to Madre, welcome in. And uh, we're, we're done uh, testing out the PCG. <laughs> it's not random at all. Well, yeah, that's the point. I, I made it so in my in the graph test, we specifically tested. Right. With my modules. With this with the same module on seed zero, seed zero, non-randomized build. Here's the, here's the layout. Fails. Same thing, fails. <sighs> uh, we, we did um, PCG stuff, a tutorial will be uh, out on Sunday on how to use it for um, modular stuff. Or uh, if you go to the YouTube site, you can rewind if you want to watch. That'll also be available then. Is there no debug like snap? See, I don't know. There's not enough documentation for me to like, I don't know where to find that if there is. I don't know what it's doing in the background. I don't know if it's failed. I don't know anything. And I've tried asking and the, the, the help was lackluster to say the least. So I've, I've tried again, this time being like, hey, here's all the successes. It's not working because the last thing that I, I got from the the developer was basically yeah you have like too many uh try try reorganizing your graph but i had it fail with just a main main path too so i don't know no idea it's stupid like the fact that it ha that it works here because clearly it knows the bounds and everything it knows the rooms 
Because this is what stores all the information of where the rooms are and the chunks and everything. Right? But... Bound to bound, number of chunks, connections. Here are all the connections, right? Here's all the doors. It knows all this information. So it should be uh, exactly the same. Is there a way to include YouTube chat and Twitch chat or vice versa? Well, yeah, I just I don't have um, either one like on screen. Uh, partially because Twitch doesn't let you combine chats. Partially because uh, yeah, I don't. But yeah, on my side, here you guys are. Oh, Twitch and YouTube in one chat. That's why I'm replying to all you guys at the same time. I actually also have the Twitch dashboard and the YouTube dashboard chats open as well. But that's just as I guess backups. Do other, yeah, yeah, so that's, that's the thing. Uh, if I random my seed, it does work. Uh, so when I hit play, right, it works. And you'll see, okay, so right now it's just loading. And it says new seed reloaded. I made this new seed reloaded again. New seed reloaded again. Open. So if I hit play, it's going to take probably a different amount of time. Yep. First time. So I made this extra thing in my game mode. Uh, game mode. Where if after three seconds, it has not lo made the dungeon ready, destroy it, make a new seed and build it again. And keep doing that until it's ready. So it'll work. And as you saw, the it, it failed three times in that one, then it was fine. Uh, and the next time, if it, here it opened immediately. And then if I do it again, it opened immediately. And it's picking random seeds. Right? So if it's fine immediately. Oh, here we go. Here's a problem one. Okay, it picked one new seed and then was fine. So this gets around the problem. But this doesn't figure out what the problem is and why it's happening to begin with. And that's... <laughs> and that... I, I don't... I don't know. I don't know. Oh, look at that. There's our boss room. We know where the boss room is, but I can't jump over to it. <laughs> uh, oh, ads. Ads are here. Pausing for ads. Let's wait for ads. Uh, only thing, the thing is that it has to be something wrong in the level. There might be some overlap with another level. No, because every single level spawns here. I can go through this entire place. It, uh, every single level is here. It successfully has spawned every single... I haven't seen a single level not be spawned in. But again, even if it has overlap... That's just for, like, attaching, right? If you put something outside of that level, it'll still place it. It just won't be, like, it'll just appear outside that level. Um, for example, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do this test while the, the ads are playing, just to show. If I go uh, here, I'll go, I'll just modify my spawn room. Uh, don't save. If I just take this and I place this out here, outside the bounds, uh, let me just take actually this one. Put this outside the bounds. It's outside bounds. Save. No, it's ads are done. I'll show this. So that way. Twitch also uh, isn't, uh, doesn't miss it. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how it knows 
It knows that's hidden in game, so let's the lightings. Okay, ads are done. Also, <laughs> come on, uh, travel in twice. There's nothing to apologize for. You're good. Uh, so we're just adding this piece outside the bounce, right? In this level, in the spawn room. And if I go back in and I spawn my dungeon. You see reloaded. You see reloaded. There we go. And there's our box. It can exist outside that ba those bounds. It just, if there was a door there and I happen to load a, a new level there, it would just be inside of that new level and you don't want that to be. That's why the bounds are there. Um, otherwise, it's just instancing levels in. It's nothing like super special with that. But yeah, there's that cube that we placed and it's outside the bounds of the level. So it's not that. And... I don't know what it is. I genuinely have no clue what it is. But, you know, we found a little workaround for it. Um, this, uh, at least I found one this morning. At least for the time being, just to have something, right? Because I, I need... I need Otherwise, I was canceling the load. Every, anyone who's been here, like, for the other uh, streams knows, like, I have to click escape and then just click, you know, Alt-P again to play again from start. And it just, it wasn't good. So, this is a, a good uh, alternative. Ah, I'm dead. <laughs> I fell in the hole. I fell in the hole. Karma. Probably karma. <laughs> okay, what I wanted to do, though, is... Uh, is actually uh, play around with the spider AI. I need to f actually set that up. Uh, if I go to AI... I need this one. And I'm going to need... I'm going to take enemy melee. I'm going to duplicate it. And this is going to be an uh, enemy. Great spider. This one up. And then let's go to our maps. Testing map. Um, goodbye. Bring our, our boss. Here's our boss. And our boss currently doesn't do doesn't do anything because I broke his uh, AI. But I can already give him um so I go here, great right spider. Type that one in. Okay, theory theory. Yeah, he's already going to start doing the same thing as the melee enemies. Right? But we have uh, new abilities for him. And his range is, like, all the range of stuff needs to adjust. Yeah. Jump to me, please. Yeah. Okay. So the things we want to modify is on him... Uh, if I search movement, um, probably not the best thing to call it movement. Yeah, movement speed. Uh, so your actual speed is going to be um, a little bit faster. 250, 400, uh, 500. Our speed is 600 without uh, dashing. So... You know what? 600. 300 or 50. Um, and then I want to modify your attack radius to be like uh, 150 and then your defense radius to be like 500. 
but should be fine for you attacking me still. Yeah, look at that. Still fine. And he's moving much faster. He might be a little too fast, though. I think let's, let's, uh, let's tone it down a little bit. Uh, 350, 200. Yeah. Excellent. So we want him to also use his other abilities. We have uh, a ram attack, which is very cool. And he has the, uh, the teleport. So let's give him those abilities. So. Uh, kill you that for now. So. What I want to do is. When you're in combat, um, if I need to check your distance, so let's go, um, backboard event. I'm going to check if your value change uh, board self and I'm going to set it to be this is to attack target and I want it to be uh, less than uh, 500 for this stuff and I'll just duplicate this This is going to be uh, greater than 500. And if it's greater, I want to uh, try the ramming attack. Let's see if this is just going to work. Ah! Okay. Couple of good things, couple of. Well, we have a little bit of a problem here where he's no longer strafing. Mm. Oh, you know what I can do? I can kill this and I can put this on the left. So he does this if he's over, otherwise he goes this way. Excellent. And just to make sure. Why did you stop strafing? What happened? I haven't changed anything here. I just detach you. You're fine. If I reattach you. Okay, you're fine. I do one of these and get away real far. Oh, I need to, um, this greater, I need to do uh, lower priority. Oh, uh, it has a percent change. No, no, we want to remove the percent change. Um, remove the at location. And remove this. It's just try ramming attack. Okay. But then it breaks and this stops working properly. Because this fails.
right? It's never going here. Oh, that's bizarre. What am I doing here that could cause it to fail? It shouldn't be anything special. Oh. That could be it. Uh, but I think I reset it here. So that shouldn't have been it, but we learned that this isn't doing what we thought it was go it's doing anyway, so that's irrelevant. It's failing on the EQS word. But it's only failing if I do it, it's only failing after the RAM. Right, but right now, he's still walking around me. Oh, this is bizarre. It's probably something small and stupid. It usually always is. Um, that selector is fine. Or anything the major news about AI? I mean, sure, it can do... I can tell you it's going to do a lot of things, yeah. I'm, until it happens, it doesn't matter to me. I don't live in a what if. I live in a now. What if we have AI that, you know, replaces all our jobs? And then what? We're going to go homeless? No, we'll deal with it at that point. It's like... Civilization will adapt. Don't worry about it. At the current moment, don't worry about it. That, that, that's my suggestion. Mm. I do not know the reference. It's been way too long since I've seen the movies. <laughs> way too long. Way, way, way too long. Ignorance is bliss. It's not ignorance. It's just it doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect anybody right now. We're talking about the future. Okay. I have no control over it. So why should I bother me? Makes no sense to me. This is all fine. Let me check the blueprint here. No, I'm doing the I'm just doing the RAM here. Uh, you. I can do that. Oh. Excuse me? Um. Yeah, once again, you're failing... Failing? Why are you failing this? Uh, go here. Here. Uh, Alright, so there's the EQS working. If I go far enough away, he does this. Oh, what? Now he's fine? Excuse me? Think now you're fine?
Uh, oops. Uh, can we... There we go. So you're, yeah, you're running around. You charge me. Charge me again. I, I need to, uh... Let's, uh, decrease your damage real quick. Um... Uh, knock up uh, amount down back. Oh, uh, knock up modifier. Here, I'm just gonna set your damage to zero. <laughs> it's just, just testing your animations. Why aren't you not okay? First of all. Uh, focus on me. Not attack radius. Uh, attack target. And then clear focus. Did you not see me? Oh, come on. How are you? What? How are you failing this now? Okay. How? Focus target is the attack target. I'll even duplicate this one. The one you're fine with. What? Oh, this is bizarre. Uh, this is very bizarre. So, is it f finishing? Is it just. Failing? No. Oh, you know what it is? Um, it's, no, I think it was. No, he's using controller desire rotation. Because otherwise, when he straight around me, he wouldn't be looking at me. Right? When he does this, he would not be looking at me otherwise. This is all correct. I can cl uh, close you for now. Is it calling this at all? I, I did put it in. Yeah, I did put it in. Oh, what? It's not at all? It's showing that it's going here. But it's not even doing print. Oh, hold on, hold on. That's... I forget that when I do that, I have to do enable all on-screen messages or I see nothing. There we go. That That's a bug with Unreal right now. So let me see if it's uh, failing then. It seems like it's failing. No, it's succeeding. Thank you. 
Yeah, it's just... Oh, do I need a cooldown? Uh, I probably need a cooldown for it. Problem is probably just I need to add a cooldown. And a cooldown of uh, five seconds. No. Oh. Oh, this is bizarre. Okay, and if we don't have it focus... Right, it does it. Okay. So we can do this. Ooh, why... It should face to turn... Uh, to turn towards me. Ah, but it doesn't. Okay, that time it did. Did there. Curiouser and curiouser. You know, I've changed some stuff around. Yeah, so I'm gonna probably investigate this. So this ramming attack. Uh, when I... Yeah, when I do the ramming attack on the spider, uh, what am I sending through? Hold on, wait a second. I'm sending in who it is. What I'm not sending through is is where it should look. So, do I not set rotation? I don't set rotation. Okay. That's what I need to do right before here. So here, set uh, actor rotation. And the rotation is going to be uh, 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 look, uh, calculate, calculate, uh, look, find look at a rotation. Get actor. Uh, switch this all over, please. Give ourselves some more room. And the other one we need is... Uh, Uh, attack target. Down here. Actor. 
location here. So he should now look at me before he charges. <laughs> okay, well, um, he rammed me correctly. Um, that, <laughs> okay, um, that ain't quite ha mm, go what, 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 like I wanted it to. <laughs> Try that again. Oh, I need to did I, did I not save the oops. Um, okay, damage uh, zero. Uh, the focus is fine. Trace that is fine. The ramming attack. Uh, Uh, I need to redo the cube. Okay, yeah, one more time. Set uh, actor rotation. Do it right at the beginning of this. All this animation. I think I did it at the wrong location before. Um, look at right, look at rotation. It actor location in okay. that should be good. I'm going to save that and uh, let me just yeah the behavior tree didn't save it all. So behavior trees. Spider, uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's not there. <laughs> Let's come here. Uh, where's the ramming attack? There it is. Just copy you here. Uh, remove this, this, and we're gonna do on result changed. This is a target greater than 500. Uh, or priority. Oh, ads. Ads are here. Pausing for ads. But all we're doing is just resetting up what we had before, so it should be fine. We're fine with this. Save. Just to double check. Um, so yes, it's doing it. Okay, it's doing it. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> now it's probably charging me. Now it's probably charging me. All we had to do was probably set the rotation. I don't know why the focus thing didn't work. That's a little confusing, but once as they're done, we'll continue for a little bit. It's already getting late. But yay. Um, I also want to do the other one. Uh, I also want to do teleport. So we'll set up the teleport as well. Now hopefully, will work. Uh, <laughs> I just want the, the the functionality back, and we can customize it and all that later. Yep, yep. Okay. Ads are done, and it seems like we got our fix in. Just need to, I guess, reload it. And now he's charging in the correct direction, and he can continue charging at me 
if I continue to stay away. Right. If I stay too far away, he will just charge me. But if I get closer... Okay. If I come closer... Uh, he's not doing the... Why is the strafe again failing? He is finding the... Read it because it's flickering. <laughs> really odd. Why is it unreachable? 25%. Interest. It's not finding valid locations. Oh, it's because his radius is bigger. Isn't no, it's it. I'm pretty sure. No, I need to uh, override the radius. His radius is di is bigger. If I made this like five hundred. Is that the problem? No, he was working fine before. Right, he was strafing fine before. Oh. Oh. Okay. So. There's the problem. Uh, strafe, uh, large circle. And for this one, we'll do, uh, 500. Okay. And now on the great spider, we can do large circle. So now it should be fine. You can charge me. Problematic again. Nope, that wasn't the problem. Why? Okay, well, uh, EQS is still something I'm learning. Making no sense to me. It's, it's all fine. Once he does that, it's no longer all fine. Arc angle, space between. Okay, well, uh, I will figure that out at some point. <laughs> I will, uh, yeah, cause, cause it's fine. It doesn't need this large circle. Um, because it's fine strafing where it is. Here, right? It strafes. It strafes fine. No issues. It's only after ramming. Now it's fine. It's after ramming and then going too far. It went back to strafing there. Why is he strafing now? Oh, this is so <laughs> so odd. And now he won't. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Uh, okay. In the meantime, let's uh, let's do the teleport thing. And I'm gonna say uh, if your distance is over uh, one thousand, I'll just see that this works. hard to do I don't know where he is I don't know if it worked oh there he is I'm probably more than a thousand away but he probably lost interest of in me Yeah, I need to give a cooldown to the ram. That's what I need to do. Uh, uh, let's do a cooldown of uh, five seconds. Yeah, that's fine. Wait, why? It went to the teleport. I saw it. But again, it is not doing the teleport. Huh? I'm over a thousand away. It should be. Teleport. Oh, hold on. It's uh it's again. I gotta do this. It's seeing the message. So once again. Through here. No worries, Joseph. You have a good one as well. Enjoy your Easter. As we continue to figure things out here. Hopefully. Yep, there it is. It triggers, but is it failing? Oh, hold on. I need to redo this. This was, uh, this needed to be redone. Uh, this goes here. Uh, remove pin. First, we check uh, this. This fails, then it just finishes execute. Oh, then it does this, and if it fails here, it also does a piece, and then succeed here. And it should succeed. So let's. See it succeed. Wait, what? Oh, pff. there's a volume here that I just clipped. There's the kill zone in that area. Uh, no, does not trigger. Why? Check that it triggers here, um, and then here. Success. Uh, token. Fail token. Let's see what's gonna print. Fail tokens. It failed to get the token. Oh, hold on. It's because it also needs a cooldown. Uh, uh keep that there. Why, why did you open an? Okay, that there. Uh, we need to just add another a cooldown. This thing, because I don't want it triggering multiple times repetitively.
Veil token. Okay, well. I'm gonna need to figure that out. But I think I'm gonna call it here for the night. As uh, it is late. And this is gonna need a lot of brain power. <laughs> Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I do hope you enjoyed it. A little PCG adventure. Some, uh, some good old uh, game dev stuff. And then till uh, probably Sunday. Uh, we'll see if I end up streaming or finishing early. And if so, I'll stream some more today. Take care, guys. Bye, John. Bye.